language, folks, that even Democrats can understand. <laughs> um, and so, so let's start from the very beginning. You say that the, this is the greatest threat facing America, and I think this is a hard sell for a lot of even Republicans yes. and conservatives who have been told that ISIS is the greatest threat or Russia is the greatest yes. threat or taxation or social policy. Why is immigration the greatest threat facing the country? Well, first of all, I'm assuming a lot of you are, are Republicans or conservative Democrats, and it just it feels like we have been overwhelmed with wave after wave of loss. Obama is elected. Obama is re-elected. There is Obamacare being upheld twice by the Supreme Court. Gay marriage voiced on us. Um, the, um, Obama withdraws our troops from Iraq. I am a ferocious supporter of the Iraq War. Um, and I can't believe Obama comes in and gives away our victory. I, I mean, I hate him for that more than I hate him for Obamacare. Um, None of this had to happen. It is all the result of Teddy Kennedy's 1965 Immigration Act. Uh, without the 1965 Immigration Act, the post-1970 immigrants, very different from the pre-1970 immigrants. So I don't want to hear any weeping about your grandfathers. Um, but we'll get back to that. Uh, the post-1970 immigrants are what got Obama elected in the first place. He could not have been elected without the post-1970 immigrants who have been voting 8-2 to two for the Democrats. Without Without the 1965 Immigration Act, Romney would have won a bigger victory against Obama than Reagan did against Carter in 1980. I think probably some of you were as surprised as I was the day at 3 a.m. election night. Huh, I thought he was going to win that. We'll get used to saying that a lot more. Huh. I thought we were going to win that election. What happened to that state? Um, how did we get Obamacare? Well, Al Franken was the 51st vote for Obamacare. Uh, how did he win? Well, he, he cheated. But he wouldn't have been within, within shouting distance of cheating but for 100,000 Somalis now living in Minnesota who were instructed by the first Muslim congressman, Keith Ellison, you must all vote for Al Franken. Uh, without Obama as president, we wouldn't have Sonia Sotomayor we wouldn't, on the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have Elena Kagan on the Supreme Court. All these losses didn't have to happen. So whatever you think the most important issue is, it's not. I mean, even now I get this sense, and, and from talking to people, you run into d Democrats, and especially working class Democrats, saying, you know, I have had it. This, the Democrats have gone too far, this hysteria over, you know, taking down Confederate soldiers and changing the name of the Jefferson Monument and, and the fake rape cases and Obamacare and gay marriage. That's it. I'm voting Republican. Hellfire will rain down on these Democrats. Well, that might well happen, but Americans are about to be over, outvoted by other voters, by foreign voters the Democrats have brought in. Now that's only talking about the political aspect because I'm assuming this audience <laughs> cares about the political aspect and why should you care about this issue more than anything else, certainly if you're a Republican. But it's more than that, in order to bring in voters who will vote, eight to two for the Democrats, we're bringing in extremely primitive cultures and this is most of what my book covers. Um, to, in order to make it short and very readable, 100 pages of footnotes. It's way shorter than it looks. You've got to read it. Um, I, I ended up cutting 200 pages a month before we went to press. But what I wanted to keep in, and I thought it was important to keep in, um, were gang rape, child rape, incest rape. We are bringing in peasant cultures. It happens that Latin America is the peasant culture closest to us, but that's not the only one. Oh, no, no, this, these are very common behaviors, as are driving drunk and dumping your crap on the ground. I mean, it is changing our culture in ways that the rich don't experience. It's never coming to Knob Hill in San Francisco. It's probably not coming to Newport Beach. It's not coming to Park Avenue. No, they just get the cheap maids. While Americans are the ones bearing the cost, not only in terms of taxes, in their schools being overburdened, in massive you know, school lunch programs, the hospitals are going bankrupt. No, it's ordinary Americans who are paying the cost, and most of all, I would add here, are African Americans. I mean, has, has anybody in the media checked with, or as I've recently been instructed to stop saying African Americans, American blacks? Because that is what I mean. I'm not talking about a guy whose father is a Kenyan. Um, American blacks. Of the best-selling book in Trump we trust, E Pluribus Awesome, and Coulter. And to me, this comes down to a very simple, basic, fundamental choice. The inconvenience of a few guests that want the privilege to be here. The inconvenience or the gambling with the lives of the American people.
Why is that such a hard decision for people? No, and you're right in your monologue. Why can't we learn from Western Europe? Um, just a few weeks ago, German intelligence reports that a thousand German residents um, have gone to fight with ISIS. Hundreds of them have come back to Germany, and what does Merkel do? She's setting them up with welfare because, you know, if they don't have a lot of welfare, that could that could radicalize them. Um, why don't we believe what what these migrants uh, say? I mean, they come to countries, they they rape women. They're having a very difficult time learning not to rape women, even if they're infidel whores and have short skirts. Um, what other immigrant group could, could not stop itself from raping masses of women? Um, they march around saying, no, you're going to live under Sharia law. They commit terrorist acts. Um, it's right in front of our eyes. And can you imagine I mean, what Merkel has done is spreading throughout Western Europe. Um, but just in Germany alone, combining German military discipline with Islamic ideology, it's, it's terrifying what we're up against. Why would you do that? in this no. country. And meanwhile, they keep trying to distract us with Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia is probably one of our better allies in the fight against Islam. They've been dealing with these Islamic terrorists for centuries now. And you remember, they're the ones who warned America about the Tsarnaev family that blew up uh, the Boston Marathon. But no, our government officials wouldn't wouldn't listen. Let's just let's just worry about Russia now that um, how long ago did it, it, Reagan it, win the Cold uh, War? It, it's over. It's six months of a conspiracy. <laughs> lie. I mean, it's been nonstop. Here's, here's a really tough question. I know you'll touch it, but so many are afraid to touch it. If you grow up under Sharia and you're a man and you think you have the right to tell women they can't drive, travel, they've got to dress a certain way, uh, they can't be seen in public with uh, without a male relative, if you think you can throw gays and lesbians off of, of, off of big buildings and kill them or hang them, if you persecute Christians and Jews, how do we know? How do you ever vet? somebody's mind and heart if your culture you grew up that's what you learned which directly contradicts yes. our constitutional values how do we vet that is that possible even no you're absolutely right in addition to the fact that there is no you know syrian fbi they don't have a computer database and there was testimony before the senate last year um, saying there's nothing to vet, there's nothing we can look at. Uh, I also think it's worth mentioning, maybe you've shown these, and if you haven't, you should. I tweeted it out a few weeks ago, photos of women going to college in Afghanistan not that long ago. It was in the 70s. And they look, it looks like an American college campus. They're wearing, you know, skirts and button-down shirts and carrying their book bags. Things can turn overnight. When you're bringing in these masses of people from very, very different cultures and make it a hate crime to ask them to assimilate, you know, for the cherry on top, um, and, and they have no intent of, of assimilating. Plus, which, what are we getting out of this? Um, it's one thing if, if we're bringing in nuclear scientists or, or engineers. I don't think we're getting a lot of those. But the vast majority of refugees are just instantly coming in, sucking up welfare that's meant for our people. Yeah. Let me ask you a political question. Uh, one of my favorite clips of the snowflake left is you're on your buddy Bill Maher show. And it's like June or July of 2015. And you say, yeah, Donald Trump has the best chance of winning. And the crowd just is laughing at you. I don't think they're laughing now. So you've been a very strong supporter. I'm pretty angry with the Republican Party. They seem ill prepared, especially on repeal and replace. And it seems like the president is trying to clean it up. Hopefully they get there. Hopefully they get, get, get consensus. Are you happy with how things are going so far? Um, on most things, um, I, I'm disappointed with the Republican Congress. Um, first of all, they ought to be impeaching those two travel ban judges immediately. It is totally outrageous. It is against the Constitution. The president, yep. and by the way, every member of Congress took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Um, the commander in chief has authority over immigration. He has full authority not only through the Constitution and end his duties as commander in chief, but through a federal law passed by Congress that's been on the books and reaffirmed 
in hundreds of Supreme Court cases, or rather court cases, um, at least a dozen Supreme Court cases. Um, this is 100% the prerogative of the commander in chief. And to have a district court judge stepping in and saying, oh, no, the commander in chief doesn't have that duty. What else is it? could a district court just say, oh, no, we're overruling your decision to go to war because, you know, someone in Hawaii could be affected. This is what we need Congress doing. I was hoping for a better, a better repeal of Obamacare. Sean, they've had seven years to work on it, and no one in Washington seems to eight. understand Who's the free counting? market. Yeah, they've had <laughs> and eight I'll years. Hold, you eight. Know, the, I'll, I'll hold our emperor god Trump harmless on Obamacare. That really isn't his job. He's supposed to be building, building the wall, deporting illegals, imposing the refugee ban. But with looking at the massive resistance, a pro-American president we finally have, looking at the resistance he's getting, he could use an assist from, from Republicans in Congress. And other than a handful of them, he's not getting it. All right. Ann Coulter. Uh, I